How are we all? Hope we're all good. Big shout out to KR Couriers and Slash Paws Limited for all your support. Big thank you to everyone who likes, shares, comments and subscribes to the All or Nothing podcast with myself, Billy Moore. Loving life, living the dream. We're blessed with a few short decades, you know, so let's be grateful. People say to me, you know, do you ever feel depressed when you come back from Thailand? Did you ever feel down or, you know, how's your mental health? Now, when you're sitting and sh- sitting, as someone says, I keep saying you're sitting. I sound like Sean Connery. I share hello, Miss Money Penny. I'm sitting in a shell. So when you're sitting in a shell and you're reflecting on your life because you've got loads of time, that's what it's about, you know. Every time I've read a book, I've read two books, and both of them have been in prison. And why? Because I've got the time. Try and write one out here, and it is a nightmare. The second one, I had to finish outside. I didn't leave the first one, but I'd already done like the meat and potato of it. You know, all you had to do was pour a little bit of gravy over the story and, you know, make sure all the time management and it was chronologically in order. So that was how it was. But when you're sitting in a cell and you're reflecting, you think to yourself, you know, time, you know, is going by. Life is very short. You realise that year after year, you know, nothing's changing. You come out of them landings now, you see the same people doing the same thing day in, day out. And that jail smell, it stinks, it's horrible. You know, so when I came back from Thailand, and although it was barbaric and it was austere and you know, it was very difficult to to understand what I'd witnessed and was subjected to. I just had to carry on with life. You know, and using drugs was a way out. It was an escape. It buried a lot of the pain. It buried a lot of the, the memories. But they always resurfaced once I stopped. So he had to stop and then he had to deal with all that, all that, all that shit. You know, and that's the only way you're going to grow. That's the only way you're going to heal. Is when you've got years and years of trauma. Is if you keep drinking and, and using and, and escaping from it, it'll never go away. It'll, it'll always haunt you. And I had to sit down and I had to pull that mirror out and have a good look at myself and go, do you know what? You know, we'll get through this. I didn't like the person that was in the reflection looking back. I hated myself, you know, and I learned to start to like myself. People used to say, you need to love yourself before, you know, you can love others. And I fucking didn't even like myself. You know, that was the truth. Yeah, so, yeah, I've been blessed with a few short decades. Some people, you know, struggle with a smile. Some people can be emotional vampires. Some people just want to live in that depression and, and throw the quilt over them day in, day out. Now, what I'm going to say to you is, no, get up, trust yourself down, get out, go for a little walk, look around you, absorb life, live in the landscape, don't live in your mind, you know, um, and that's what I do. You know, you either get busy living or you get busy dying. So at the moment, I'm... You know, I'm enjoying my freedom. I'm going to say my freedom, I'm enjoying the freedom from active addiction because I'm not chained to a chemist anymore. I haven't got a a letter off the Pope just to go to, just to go on holiday because that's what it was like, you know. We weren't gangsters when we were using. You don't find any gangsters in the methods online, you know. You end up with relationships with toxic, codependent, you know, partners, chemical lovers, using partners. You've got nothing in common apart from using. You know, and I've done some crazy things while I've been on the crack. I've actually, like, you know, years ago, the crack was crack. It's not like it is today. You know, and it was like, I was smoking, you know, like copious amounts of, 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 of crack because... It, it took me to fucking rock bottom. That's what it does. Heroin, you can kind of manage. You can get through it. You know, you, you don't need as much. But that crack, fuck that. Cocaine. 
wow. You know, the most expensive drug on the planet and you've got to share it with someone. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, sad. You know, you get a little pebble, a little rock. You smoke it and you want more. You've got that rock out. You're on the floor because you think you dropped the crumb. You know, you end up smoking toast and toenails and pieces of glass. And, you know, you'll even look in other rooms thinking you've dropped it in there when you haven't even been in there. That's how mad it is. It's crazy. You know, psychosis. Yeah, anyway. So, my life, you know, I ruined myself. I've destroyed myself physically in a few ways. I've come off a motorbike and I've ended up in, in hospital in a third world country after being rushed there in a wheel barrel with... You know, half me got sloshing about. You know, I had a thousand methamphetamine tablets in my pockets. I remember these two low Asian soldiers walking in with AK-47s with banana clips in them. I'm on the floor, you know, blood's everywhere. But this Irish fella who saved my life, don't know his name, never, you know, never met him since. But I'm really grateful for him, for him being there because I would have been dead. You know, these two soldiers looked at me. I panicked because I was trying to breathe. You know, my foot were on the drugs. I wasn't going to get fucking nicked. You know, I didn't think I was going to die. I just didn't know. I was in, I was in shock. And he pulled out the camera, took a picture of me. And that was it. They fucked off. No idea why they did that. You know, I could only think it was because, you know, if I did die, they, they had evidence to say that, you know, they'd come and see me or to show the embassy. I haven't got no idea. But anyway, you know, physically I was damaged. I ended up with, you know, having two operations in, in Bangkok, one in Chiang Mai. Then I flew back to the UK after, after three years and had one in, um, is it St. George's in... London. I was in Wandsworth prison on a repatriation. You know, I've got a scar that stretches from one part to be back right the way around to my stomach. You know, you got to understand, you know, I had a, a Honda 50 wave fly in the air, land the chassis on my chest. Breaking ribs, punching in my lung. I had a handlebar go right through the side of my stomach right through the side of my stomach. It was, um, it was horrific. How I survived, I don't know. But yeah, so that physically, and um, you know, I've ended up with cancer and hepatitis because of I was fighting in Thai prisons. I ended up with uh, hepatitis. So I was on um, hepatitis C. I had cancer treatments, chemotherapy for six months. That was horrendous. I went from 16 stone, dropped down to, to nine stone. All my hair fell out. You know, it was, in, it was in a bad way. And then he had interference treatment back to back after the cancer. That was a fucking nightmare, trust me. He said, you know, we don't suggest you do this. But I thought, you know what, let's just go for it. <laughs> I'm not going through, you know, a whole load of shit again. Just let's go through one hit of it all. You know, and I braved it and I went through it and um, I cleared the cancer, you know, I cleared the hepatitis C. You know, I started going back to the gym, started to rebuild myself. I stopped taking drugs prior to all this. Started building relationships back up with my family. Started going to meetings and talking about how I felt and, you know, and, and my ego and my anger, you know, and the loss and the longing that I had going on. So I started to rebuild myself. You know, then I thought about what can I do, you know, for, for the community that I've destroyed. And this is what, you know, it's about life. It's about being of service to other people. Giving back. Offering a bit of guidance. Some hope. So I hope that someone gets something from these stories. And I, and I believe they do. I'm not, you know, just outside old swan again. Waiting for um, the gym. Waiting for the team to turn up. But yeah. You know, stories... Perseverance, resilience, you know, we've all got that, that survival instinct within us, 
just don't give up. If you're struggling out there and you know you're going through a bad, bad patch with a, with a partner or you know you're struggling on drugs, you know there is a way out. Believe me. You know, and it doesn't have to be through fellowships or or churches or, or, or whatever. It's there's a way out. Just don't fucking pay for it. <laughs> You've got these air organisations that want to charge you a fortune to get clean. You don't have to trust me. You know, if anyone wants to um, fucking pay me to fucking help you get clean, I'll fucking help you. But no, I wouldn't take your money. No, sorry, I wouldn't do that. Um, I don't even know why I said that. Just having a laugh. But anyway, yeah. Recovery free. Thanks for listening. Leave it there.